Hey everyone, my name is Lauren from My Something Beautiful Life. Erin Condren today released their new teacher planners and so I thought I would give you a flip through of how I plan to set up mine. This is not one of the new ones. This is actually the style that they released last year and I made some modifications to it to make it work better for me. So I just wanted to show you what I've done and how I plan to use it. So when I purchased this planner, it went from January to December of 2023. So this is still good for this coming fall and that's what I plan to use it for. If it's working for me at that point, I'll probably just buy another one, but I purchased this one when they were discounted because the year had already started. I just wanted to try it out and see if it was really what would work for me. And the main change that I made to it was that I actually uncoiled it and I also uncoiled this notebook that I had. It was just a lined notebook. They're both eight and a half by 11. And you can see I have the bigger coil on this now. So this is the rest of the planner that I'm not using and the extra lined pages from the notebook. And then I made this into my teacher planner and it's a lot thinner and easier to carry around because I travel a lot for work. I don't just stay in one classroom. It's also probably worth mentioning that I'm not a teacher. I do work in schools with children, but I'm not a actual teacher, which is why how I'm using this is probably more unique than how most people use it. And so that's part of the reason why I wanted to share. You don't have to be a teacher in order to use this planner. It can be helpful in a lot of other professions, but because it's made for teachers, it actually works really well in other academic settings. So I'm going to move this out of the way and then we will talk about what I've done to change it up. Normally I don't buy dated covers. Partially, I just think they're so pretty. I would hate to not use them year after year. I love my covers and I love switching them out, but I did decide to go with the dated one on here and it's just really, really pretty with this holographic foil. I'm just really loving it. I left a lot of the main pages in here. And if you are looking at getting one of the new ones, most of this is pretty much the same except for the interior designs. You can choose now between the wildflowers and the inspire themes. And this one is in Harmony Colorful, as you can see. And I think the only main thing that I heard that they changed with the new ones is that instead of websites and passwords here, this is actually, and I'm totally forgetting what it's called right now, but they made it for um, like, oh, it's professional development, I think. So that is here instead of websites and passwords. Other than that, I'm pretty sure most of this interior layout is the same as what it has been in like what you will see in here, except for the actual design. Just keep that in mind in case you're looking at the new ones. So on this first page, I don't know what I'll do with this. Um, it might come in handy, but I just don't have any immediate plans for it. And you'll see that throughout the planner, I have sticky notes that I've put down just to kind of mark what I wanted to use them for. And this is the first place where I put in some of the extra note pages. I plan to use this as a list for keeping track of evals and IEPs. I work with a company that does occupational therapy in the schools and because we work for an entire district and not a single school or classroom, we handle hundreds of kids each year. And so it's really important for me to have a place to track those IEPs and the evals that we do. And I thought that this communication log page would be a good place to do that, but it's definitely not big enough. There's two of them. Let me see. So there's the other half. And I just added some note pages in here in the middle just to make sure that I had enough room to track all of the evals and IEPs that we do. The next thing that we have is this yearly overview. It's actually 18 months. And this is where I will keep track of school holidays and other important dates. Part of my job is also working with the other employees of our company. I do payroll and I work on the billing that we send to the district. And I'm also over technology, which basically means if somebody's iPad's not working, I'm the one that gets to try to figure out how to fix it. So this page will actually come in really handy when I'm doing payroll, just for the different holidays and days off from school, things like that. And then on this page, I want to use this to track the employee time off and their PTO that they use, just so it can be all in one place. It will also be on the monthly calendars, but this will make it really easy for me to just go through and look at it all at one time and not have to flip through and try to figure out where something specific is when I'm looking for it. The next pages that we have are some graph pages. These first two I'm going to use to keep track of important things that I reference all the time. So our employee contact information is here, their phone numbers, email addresses. Most of it's in my phone, but every once in a while I just need it not in my phone. And so that will be here. 
and then also our logins for our subscriptions and things that we use as part of our job. And then there's also a couple more graph pages in here. And then after that, I did add in some more lined pages. This is where I want to keep track of the employee's PTO. Like I mentioned, I have that one page where everything will be on, like when they took time off. This is for me to keep track of how many hours they actually have left. Our payroll program does not track that very well, or at all actually, and so this is something I have to do manually. I'm working on getting it set up in Excel, but for now it's just on paper and that's how I know how to do it, and it's been working. So I put in pages so that I have enough for everybody to have a page, and that is plenty for the amount of time that will work while I use this one planner. And then after that, I just transfer the balance over to the new planner, and then I don't need the monthly breakdown anymore in a new planner. And then after that, we start in the monthly pages. So for this first page, I decided to make this the section where I focus on billing for that particular month. The billing's always done at the end of the month, but having it on the tab will actually make it really easy for me to go back and see what we still need to do before we turn it in. So that's what I'm gonna have here. I don't know if I'll use this for anything. We'll see. There's actually a lot of blank space in here that I don't know if I'm gonna end up using it. I just wanted to make sure that I had specific places to put in the things that I know I use regularly. Most aspects of my job I've been doing for years now, and so I know the type of space that I need to keep track of it in the way that is already working for me. What I've been using up until this point was actually the Petite Monthly Planner, and I could track all of the things that I've mentioned in here. But last fall, some of the things that I do for my job changed, and so I just found myself needing more space and different types of space. So the existing things that are already working are going to stay in the format that I'm used to having them, but I wanted them in the same planner with the new things that I need to keep track of, which is why I decided to try out the teacher lesson planner. Anyway, back to the month. So here I will just keep track of the billing that I'm used to keeping track of. Then we have the monthly calendar where I can write down the school holidays, meetings that we have, the hours that I work. Mostly I keep track of that in my phone, but when I was just using the petite monthly planner, I actually kept track of it in there and that worked really well. And so I was thinking about trying to go back to that and using both because my phone is really helpful as we're driving around to various schools, I can track which schools we're at. And then I go back and I also use that for the hours that I have worked because I know our start and end times. But it would also be helpful to just have it in the monthly view. And so I'm gonna go back to that too, I think for the fall. And then like I mentioned before, I can also use this to keep track of the employee time off and the PTO that they use. And then over here, I just have space for a monthly to-do list, which will always come in handy because there's always so many little random things that spring up. So that will be nice to have. And then this is what the weekly pages look like. I think these are supposed to be subjects generally. I mean, it doesn't have to be that. That's why they're blank so that you can set them to whatever you need them to be. I actually will probably leave them blank at this point because we're going to so many different schools. We have, I wanna say 15, 20 schools that we go to. And obviously there's not enough room in these top columns for that. And we don't go to every school each day. And so what I wanna do is just as we go to a school, I'll write it in this top line right here. It's a little bit wider than the lines below it. And so it will stand out and I'll probably highlight it or something too. And then I have space to write down what we did at that school during that day. Having six columns here should be plenty for that. And keeping track of all of this is what has been the most struggle for me this current school year. And so I'm looking forward to having this as an option for next fall. So that's what I will do for all of these weeks. And I think that pretty much wraps up the month. I think there's a notes page at the end. Yeah, there's a notes page at the end of each month. And I don't have any specific intended purpose for it right now but things always come up. And so again, I might fill it in. I might learn of something that it can be really useful for. That's the majority of the planner. So I just kept August through December in here when I recoiled it. I took out all the previous months because we start school in August, so that should be fine. And then one of my favorite parts of this planner, oh, I should mention this too. I did actually put some notes pages in the very back behind December. Let's see how many... There we go. For just any other things that come up. Like I said, I just wanted to make sure I had plenty of room. I'm used to that monthly planner that just has tons of notes pages. And so I don't even know what will come up throughout the year. Probably meeting notes. We have meetings sporadically throughout the year. And I like to keep track of 
either what we plan to discuss at those and also what we end up discussing at those just to have a record. So that can be really useful. So that's actually probably how these pages will end up being used, but they're just in there for whatever comes up. And then the last section that comes with the teacher planner is the checklist section. And this is actually one of the main reasons why I chose to get the teacher planner over any of the other planners. Like I said, we see hundreds of kids each year and we need to keep track of their treatments and their IEPs and evals and consults with the teacher and, and all of the different things that go along with making sure that they are meeting their goals and yeah, everything. And so while I can't put the individual student notes in a planner, that would just take up way too much space and it's all done digitally anyway. One thing that I have been desperately wanting is one main checklist where I can track the dates of every time that we meet with the kids. So up at the top, I can put the dates and then along the side, I will put their names. And for the most part, when we do treatments and consults, it's always done on a specific day of the week. So these pages will actually be grouped by school because that's how we see them. We go to one school, work with the kids, move on to another school, etc. There is an option to add in additional checklist pages, which I did. So I have 14 checklist pages instead of the normal seven, and this should be plenty to get through December. And in case you're curious, this is the number of columns and lines that are on each of these checklist pages. I don't think it changed in the new one, but I don't know for sure. But just in case you're wondering, so this is what I have. And then at the end, it comes with some stickers. So I left the stickers in. I also left in the sheet that came with the notebook, which is this one. There's also a pocket folder. So I kept that in. And then I also opted to get the three sheet protectors. It comes with one normally, but I did the extra two add-ons. And I'm going to use these to keep track of the things that don't change, like the school maps, our schedule, the holidays and dates, our pay schedule, anything like that can all go in these sheet protectors. So that's where I'm going to keep that for reference. But that's what I have in it just for the next few months and we'll see how it works. I hope this helped give you an idea of not only what comes in the teacher lesson planner, but also different ways that you can use it for jobs other than just being a teacher. I'm sure it's incredibly helpful as a teacher, but since I'm not one, I just figured I would share it from my own perspective, but I'm really excited about this. One of my favorite things about recoiling it is because it was so thick. I can show you this other coil. You can see the difference between these two coils. Like this planner is massive. And so for someone like me who travels around to different schools, I needed something that was more portable and lighter because I put it in my backpack. So I just needed something smaller. So recoiling it was definitely a game changer for me in just changing, in just helping me want to use it. And I love that I can keep all the different aspects of my job in one book because this current year I've just, I've had things in like, three or four different places and it's just all been really chaotic trying to find things later and I'm just really excited about having it all in one place. If you like planner videos, I would love it if you subscribed. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.